In today's video, we're gonna be looking at solvers and how do they work within MRTK. I'm gonna show you how we can track the position of an object, the rotation of an object, and also how to set different constraints. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a demo that I created to show you a couple of those solvers. So you guys can see that I can see my hands. Everything is basically rotating with my hands. I have this little menu in here that also only shows when I'm showing my left hand. So if I do this, you're gonna see that it's basically constrained. And that is by using a solver that I'm gonna show you how to set up. I can also look at orbital solvers and you're gonna see that as soon as I do that, there's going to be a sphere following me. Well, actually two of them. I can also do that with my right hand. There's a white sphere that follows the hand joint and also the blue sphere is actually following the white one through a constraint. So I'm gonna show you how that gets set up. So if I go into my left hand, you're gonna see that I'm gonna be able to change to a different type of solver. In this case, I'm using the radial view solver. And this one uses more of a radius calculation to do to determine at what point it's going to be following my hand. You can see that the blue sphere is basically following my hand everywhere I go. So let's try and do another solver, which is going to be the follow solver. This one is more rigid. There's really no, you know, radius calculation and when it has to follow my hand and see how the sphere is following and I can move my hand around and just follows me. And so that could be used for a lot of different scenarios. Let's go ahead and try the in-between. This one is really cool because I can now have multiple objects and then there's a middle object which is called the in-between solver. And this one is going to be moving relative to the objects that are on the sides. So what I can do here is I can move both of the spheres on the side and you're gonna see how the Y sphere is staying you know, in relation to the two different objects. So I can also use a ray. So if I wanted to you know, go back here, and then select the blue sphere, I can move it around, and you're gonna see it's more clear of when it's going to be moving. You can also do the same thing with this one, if I wanted to move it around, or I can just, you know, basically grab it with that near interaction. So let's go ahead and try the directional solver. There's actually gonna be arrows that are going to indicate that the main menu is on the middle. So you can see that there's a white arrow there and there's a blue right on the edge. And it's basically telling me that there is a, you know, there's a menu right there. Let me actually go back here. You're gonna see the arrows start to show and then they're gonna disappear as soon as my head is in position to the menu. So let's go ahead and jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so we have a lot to cover today and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with setting and showing you basically the setup here. So this is just Solvers part one. It's going to be part of my basically or tutorials that I'm gonna be submitting into GitHub. I also have a hand menu, I haven't implemented it because I wanna show you how to set it up. And we're basically gonna have our hand and our hand is going to be rotated. And as soon as we rotate it, we're going to be showing the menu. Whenever we don't see the hand, it's basically going to hide it. I also have a UI component, just basically, it's a simple window that just shows us all the different solvers that we're gonna be covering. It also has a specific component, which is the object manipulator, which is gonna basically allow us to move the window around. And the host of that is going to be this component. And the other things that we're gonna be covering is going to be, you know, all these different solvers, which I want to set up with you. So first things first, let's go ahead and start with just dragging and dropping. I'm going to drag and drop a sphere onto the orbital. And I also can do the Y sphere. And if we go in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and going to be enabling each one of these and then we can probably let's go ahead and just do this and just have the scene view perhaps we can have the scene view right here that way i can have more more real estate okay so what i'm going to do for these ones is we're going to be offsetting it a little bit because i want to be able to see it in the view but i'm not going to upset it with the position so what we're going to do is we're going to be adding what's called an orbital uh, solver and once you do that it's going to add all the different components that we need is going to add a solver handler, which is going to ask you, okay, whether you want to track the head, whether you want to track the controller ray, which is basically when we're using or array either on a controller or on a hand. And also if you want to do a join, which I show you at the beginning of the video, or if you just basically want to do a specific, you know, a specific component, such as a game object that we're going to be selecting. In this case, I'm going to have the Y be the main object and then the blue is going to be follow the the y sphere so in order for us to do that we're going to go ahead and go into the blue and in instead of just tracking my head i think i'm just going to do the controller right it's going to be a little bit different than what i showed you at the beginning of the video but i'm going to show you how we can change it and then we can do we can select whether we want to use the left hand the right hand 
or both different hands. I'm actually going to do both. And then on the Y sphere, what we're going to do is we're going to do a con a basically a custom override. And we're going to tell the Y sphere to basically follow the blue. And I'm going to show you how cool that is. So now what we can do is we can offset one of them. So one of them could be perhaps the Y one. We can offset it, let's do perhaps 0.25. And then I can show you how that's going to work. So if I were to hit play right now, I also have another setup, another script that is going to hide everything that you see. And the reason for that is because I want to use the hand menu to show different components by selecting the menu options. Just for now, we're just going to be just enabling each one of them. And as soon as I do that, you're going to see that there's going to be, you know, the blue sphere and then the white one, it's following me. Let's go ahead and change a couple of things in here. On the blue one, there, the local of say by default is, is pretty large, so we can just set it to zero, zero. And then we can also do the same thing with the Y. And perhaps on the Y, we can offset it a little bit, maybe. Let's do 0.1 here on X, and perhaps we give it a little bit of depth. So, so you can basically set up a, a local offset on, the, on this component specifically. And if we hit play, you're going to see how that changes now. If I were to show my hand, you're going to see that it's currently not showing because I haven't enabled that object. That always gets me. <laughs> You can see that it's really close to the hand, right? Because we probably need to go further away. So what I'm going to do, in, and the cool thing that I can do that in play mode is, is change those in play mode, right? So if I do the blue one, I think the blue one, let's go ahead and do 0.5 on the local offset. And now if I do that, you're going to see that now it's further away from the, from the hand. We can also do grab the, the white one, and perhaps we can do Let's do 0.25, so it's further away. You're going to see that the white one is following the blue one. And that's because there's, there's a solver and a custom override on the white one that follows the blue one. So this one is going to be the orbital. It kind of looks like a planet, right? Other things that you can do here is if you wanted to, maybe the white one could be a little bit slower on you know, the movement. We can probably do 0.5 on the move lerp time. The rotation, we can also increase it a little bit. You can also, if you don't want to smooth it, you can uncheck that. If you wanted to basically have this a lifetime, meaning that we only want to have the orbital for a specific amount of seconds, and then basically it's going, it's, it's going to no orbit around the other object. So you can also do that if you wanted to do that. So this one looks more smooth, more like a, you know, like a planet. You also have local offset, which is what I just did, also world offset. If you wanted to change the, the angle and do a stepping, you can also do that as well. And then obviously the orientation, if you want to do maybe camera facing, you're going to see how that rotates. I can also undo that. You're going to see how that changes. So the other thing that I can do, if I hit shift, I can do my left hand. And that's also going to follow the left hand, just, just like it does the right hand because of the, comp because of the setup that I did on this. I'm basically saying, OK, I want to do this on both. OK, so the other thing that I'm going to do is now let's go ahead and look at radial view. So, Radial view, we're also going to be using the spheres. I want to, I want to keep it simple, so we'll just use those. So I'm going to enable, well, basically just drag and drop the same. So we're going to do a radial. Let's do the blue one. I think it's fine. And then I'll just enable it just so that we can change it and see it. And in this one, I'm just going to do radial. And make sure that you spell it correctly. And this one, I have two options. I mean, I have a couple options. I could do control ray which is what we did on the other one. I can use my hand join, or I can use a custom override. On this one, just to keep things a little bit different, I'm going to just use my head. And then what I'm going to do on the additional offset, let's go ahead and do Z about point, point 0.5. And then I'll just go ahead and hit play, and we'll just re-enable the radial view. So radial view, let's go ahead and do enable that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my arrow keys, because in this case, I want to move my head, right? I can also use the the right click on the on the mouse and basically drag and you're going to see how the sphere is going to follow let me actually decrement the the offset because i think it's too it's too far to be able to see it's going to do 0 0.1 and you're going to see that it's now following right so let's go ahead and look at some of the other settings so these are move lerp time rotate lerp time those are going to be basically part of the base the the base handler and that's why these ones most of these handlers have those settings. I can also change the, the aspects, V, and also the max degree. So this one we can do something like five. And you're going to see that as soon as I move, there's going to be just five view degrees 
that are going to you know are going to be affecting at what point it's going to start following me so we can do about if we do 10 you're going to see how that changes as well you can also change you know we wanted to do maybe the the move lurk time we wanted to just make it be a lot slower you can do that if you wanted to do zero it's going to be you know very rigid on when it's going to start following me and then i'll just do let's go ahead and do 0.5 i think it's fine that default number is a good number you can also obviously change the the mat distance i can do 0.1 there maybe 0.5 it's going to be a lot closer because we're changing the distance to be really close to the camera you also have the reference direction if you wanted to do gravity aligned object oriented there's more settings in there also lifetime if you don't want these two so let's go ahead and, and test the lifetime because i didn't show you that let's say that we wanted these to work just for three seconds so what we can do is we can do that and then maybe on the on the max view degrees we'll set it to that this one will set it to 0.5 and 1 on the max distance the minimum distance and then i'll hit play and then i'll show you how the lifetime is going to affect so as soon as this is in instantiated and enabled, you're going to see that it's following him and then it stops following because three seconds elapse. So if you don't want to use that, you just you basically just set it to zero. If I wanted to change that to the control array and maybe I only want to do that on the, you know, on the right hand, let's hit play and see how that's going to work. So for the right hand, you're going to use the space key. So if I use the space key and we enable that component, you're going to see that that it's going to but if i use the left hand see how that doesn't follow it because i didn't tell the solver to follow the ray on the left hand so that's how that works let's go ahead and disable this one and now let's try follow follow is going to be very similar to radial the only difference is that it doesn't use any degree calculations so what i'm going to do on the follow let's go ahead and, and grab a blue sphere and then perha perhaps we we'll use a white one and then on the blue one, we can do something. Well, we'll just do the follow because that one that we're covering. On this one, we can do the control array. And then you can see there's more settings in here, more changes that we can that we can do. Let's go ahead and do follow on both of them. So what I'm gonna do is on, on this one, we're gonna use a control array. But on the white one, we're going to, and I'm completely experimenting in here because I wanted to do something completely different. And then on this one, we'll just do Let's go ahead and do the left, the left hand. Uh, let me go ahead and, yep. So blue one is gonna be tracked by the control array on the left hand. And then the white one, it's going to be tracked by the, basically the control array on the right hand. And then both of these ones I'm going to be offsetting. Let's go ahead and do 0.25. I think that was a good number. And then I think I have everything in there. And then as far as like the settings in here, I mean, we could change I think I'm gonna change the lerp time on the move, rotation, we can also do 0.25. Then lifetime, if you wanna change some of those. Orientation, we can change these ones to be camera facing. And then there's also a dead zone that you can specify with this and some other settings. Distance, I think I'm gonna leave these ones and also that direction. I can also, these ones are really cool on how you can specify the horizontal degrees and vertical degrees. And then enable the follow. So this one, as you guys can see, it's only moving with my, you know, with my right hand. Let's go ahead and try the other one. Let's go ahead and try both of them because I'm now holding shift in a space. Maybe we can just make it closer to the pivot point of the hand of the actual ray. You can see how it's not as far away because we changed the horizontal and vertical degrees. If I want it to be zero and zero, I think it's gonna be right at the, yeah, it's gonna be right at the ray cast. So you can use these two settings to specify, you know, where they're going to be offsetting as far as like the direction. So in between is cool because we can tell an object to basically be positioned relative to do, to do different objects. And I can grab, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a blue sphere here, and then I'm gonna grab a white sphere. And then what I'll do is I'll just clone the blue one. And then we'll just put it in there. So this one, what I'll do is I'll just offset it point to negative two five. That way we have it on the left side. And then I'll do the same thing on the other blue, but it'll, it'll be on the positive direction. So we'll keep this one. And then just to make it cooler, we can just do, let's make this, this one a little bit larger so that we know that the middle one is the one that we want to keep, you know, in the center. The other thing that we need to do is these two are, you know, they're really, you can't really move them. So 
I'm going to introduce you to a new object. It's called the Object Manipulator. And I'm also going to be adding a near interaction grabbable because that's going to allow us to basically grab it with our hands if we wanted to grab it, or we can go from far and also grab it by using a raycast. The in-between component, which is the solver, that one we can just add to the component that is going to stay in the middle. And let me just type that. And then what I'm going to do here, this is going to tell me, okay, what do I want to, what it's going to be the component that we're going to be tracking. So the component that we're going to be tracking is going to be the first blue. So that's the one, the first component that it's going to use its position to, cal to calculate the middle distance between the, both of the blue spheres. And then on this other one, the in-between, it's going to have a custom override. And on this one, we'll do basically another sphere. And this is just the pathway offset. 0.5 is, is basically telling you that we're going to be keeping that in the middle. I think I'm losing my voice at this point. So we'll just hit play and see, and see how this looks. And I think I need to add a couple offsets, otherwise we won't be able to see them. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do 0.25. Nope, let's do 0.5. I think it's good. Let's go ahead and go back a little bit and right about there. And you guys can see how the middle one is staying in the middle, right? And then if I were to move my hand, you know, further away from the camera, you can see how that works. And then I can also do this with the with my other hand. Let's go ahead and do, in this case, I'm just going to grab it. Well, actually, it's using a raycast. And I can also go really further away from the camera, but the one on the middle is staying on the middle. So another cool thing that we can do is, let's say that on this one, we wanted to change the steps. Maybe we'll just do points about 80%, right? And the cool thing with this is now I can just, it's going to stay 70, you know, 70% 70 closer to the left one because that's what I'm telling the, the in-between solver to do. And then let's go ahead and check the last one, which is the directional indicator. On this one, I'm going to be using a, a red arrow and then also a yellow arrow. And then what I'll do on this one is when I keep it, we can just keep it right there on the, on the pivot. But the yellow one, I think I'm going to offset about, let's do negative 0.25. And this one is really cool because we can specify, so on this one, we just do directional indicator. And this one, we just specify what, what is it that we want to track, right? In this case, we want to use our head, but what the directional indicators are going to do are going to tell us the direction that we need to, that we need to be targeting. So in this case, I'm going to be targeting the menu. So if I were to move my head around, my head around, I'm going to have the arrows pointing to the location where I need to rotate my head to. So what I'll do here on the directional target, on the directional indicator, is we're going to be telling the system to look at the scene description panel, which is the one that I show you at the beginning of the video. And then I think that's basically everything that I need to do there. Uh, the scale though, I think I want to, I think I, don't, I want to have a larger scale. We can just do one, let's do, Let's do one and two. This is going to be the maximum. The actually the minimum is going to be one. The maximum is going to be two. And then the factor. Let me go ahead and undo that. Okay, I'll leave the factor there. I thought I was changing a different property. And okay, let me show you how this works. I'm going to hit play. And last time what I did is I started tweaking the numbers until I got the, the right behavior. So now what I can do is. If you remember, I, I'm, I'm using my head, not my hand. So what I can do is if I go out, you know, if I get away from the, from the menu, it's going to show the arrows and then it's going to disappear. But, it, but it's just weird because one of them is offset, the other one is not offset. So we can fix that. One of them it's going to be, which is going to be the yellow one. So I'm actually going to do, let's go ahead and do negative, negative 0.25 on that one. Let's hit play and see how that looks. And then I'll just move my head. And remember, we need to enable them. And you, can, you guys can see. So what I'm going to do is, I think these are way too large. At least the, I think, I think both of them are just way too big. Let's go ahead and do, we can do 0.5 here and then about a one. Okay, so remember that. And then on the, on the yellow one, we could probably do, because I don't want him to, I don't want them to overlap, so we'll just do negative. Okay, so we'll just do 0 0.51 and then negative 0.5. So we'll just go ahead and go back here. It's going to be that. And then we'll just do 0.25 and 1. And then, but you guys get the idea of how those arrows work. 
the directional indicator is pointing to the to the menu and you guys can see it just goes away one cool thing that we can also do if i wanted to get closer and not disappear there's also other options in here that you can you can tweak so the larger this number the view offset is the the closer that is going to allow us to go to get to so i'm going to do i can do point i think point five works in that area we can do point three here okay so point three and point five so we'll just do point three here and then point five on the view offset and i think i'm going to call it i'm going to call that one good i'm going to hit play and then you can see the arrows are showing i can also go down right and you can see how the rotation of the arrows is changing. So this is pretty powerful to basically indicate the user what they need to do, what action they need to do next. So that's how the directional indicator works. The last one that I think is one of the coolest ones is going to be the hand menu. And on this one, I already had a constraint at it, but we can, you know, we can remove it and I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to remove them and then remove this component. So this hand menu just has, we can remove this one as well. It doesn't have everything, anything, right? It just has a prefab and we can also disable this one. It just basically has a game object, but nothing in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this component here. And this component has a, a hand menu uh, in it. And if you look at it, it has a button collection. If you wanna create that one from scratch, you can go into a toolbox. And there's a lot of different menus in here. You can use a near menu, which is the one that I use documentation so you can use any of these menus and you basically follow along with what i'm doing you just drag it and drop it it's going to create a com that component the part that i want to teach you though is how how can we do things with our hands to be able to show you different menus so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do and grab what's called a hand constraint and there's also a hand constraint palm and that one is, is going to allow you to to basically determine if your palm is in the upward direction so i'm just going to use the hand constraint for this one and then it's gonna tell you, okay, what do, what do I want to, you know, what do I want to constrain this to? So it's going to tell you, okay, I wanna use either my head or I want to use the controller ray, the hand join, or a custom or a custom override. So if I were to do this right now, let me just show you how how this works. So right now this is using the is using the head. Well, we don't wanna use the head because we want to basically use the join, right? Because that's basically what we're going to be constraining. So you can say, you know, whether you want to use, you know, the left hand, the right hand, or both hands. In this case, I'm just going to use the left hand. So we're gonna leave, let me actually do that one more time. We're gonna just basically leave that as it is. And then on the safe zone, I decided to use the radius uh, side. That actually made it look good. So let, let's go ahead and try and show you how this looks. And remember, I'm doing this with my left hand. So, so right now it doesn't really show me anything because the way that, is, that my startup works is as soon as it gets to the hand menu, it's going to hide this component, but that's fine. We can just enable it for now manually, but you guys can see it's following my hand and that's because the constraint on the hand menu is basically on the hand join. So one thing that we need to do here, because I want to be able to, to enable this component is I also wanted to show you a couple, couple of hand uh, events that you can also tie to. So I'm gonna be adding two in here. And in order for us to be able to show this menu, we need to basically, you know, activate that event. So what I'm gonna do is on hand activate, meaning when we see our hand, we're basically gonna be activating the, we're gonna be activating this menu. So I'm gonna set this to true. And then as soon as I don't see my hands, I'm just gonna be disabling. This is better because I don't want to, I don't want to show that menu at all times and only show it when the hands is active and when the hand is not active and basically hide it. And then if I get, and if I hit play, you're gonna see that now this is gonna be toggling. Let's close out of that. And if I go away, basically, you know, it hides that. And, and I also have a couple of menu options in here and these are basically gonna allow you to toggle them. They are already bound to different methods that I already, I already set. So if I go into here, the, the way this is gonna work, let me go ahead and, and walk you through. The, every single one of these buttons, so if I were to enable this, every single one of these buttons has an on-click event, but I created a, a hand menu button toggle that is basically gonna be toggling each one of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this game object. On the radial one, I'm also going to be toggling this game object. And what I recommend you do is just look at this on your own time. I'm gonna just give you a quick walkthrough of how 
these scripts are going to, how, how do they work? So you know what, basically what I'm doing. But it's basically just a toggle. It activates this object and deactivates it if somebody presses one of these buttons. And then on, these, on this one, the target object is going to be this indicator. And then let's go ahead and double click on it so I can show you how it works behind the scenes. And there's also another component in here that I didn't show you that does the toggle so, so that you know that you know what I have in here. Okay, there's basically just two different scripts. One of them is going to be the experience startup. And this is basically what is hiding everything at the very beginning. It's going to hide everything under the environment and it's going to also hide uh, everything under hand menu. So that's what this script does. And then the hand menu button toggle is basically a toggle. It's going to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to toggle everything off as long as it's not this object. So in the case that we have the orbital selected, it's going to leave that one on, but then it's going to be toggling everything else to off. Because I'm checking as, as, you know, as long as the button is not this button, then I toggle everything to off. And then the toggle method is pretty simple. It just does a knot on a property that I have in here, which is a Boolean. So I know that was fast, guys, but I am going, I'm going to have this available in GitHub so you guys can download it as soon as I publish this video. So it's everything that I wanted to show you. And make sure that you guys subscribe and let other, other people know that this video is available if they want to know more about MRTK. Thank you very much, guys.